Okay. Hey, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Today is Monday, May 6, 2019. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary. This is the late night version. Um, some of you will notice it's going to be posted at like 1 o'clock in the morning. We've just had some weird things go on with my family. And uh, we shipped the wifey out to her mother and father-in-law so that uh, I'm stuck with all the kids till like next Wednesday. So short answer is I'm going to be dancing around my schedule. I apologize for canceling and not getting a proper email out, but uh, we are going to make this work one way or another. Um, today, let's talk about our markets. <laughs> Sometimes the markets catch you by surprise. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, I am set up pretty bullish. And if you listen to the news today, the news is going to tell you that uh, you were foolish, that there's no trade deal set up, that we're, we're not, we're toast. Give me no trade deal, you're gonna have a big tumble in the market. Um, I disagree with it. I, I think it's all part of the posturing. It's surprising how quickly people forget. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I had someone call and talk to me this morning that let me know how wrong I was, and they literally threw on puts in the first 15 minutes that the market uh, was open today. The first 15 minutes they threw on puts, which I think that might have found the bottom. Um, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Islamic, huh? Dow Jones Industrial Average. Go to a chart. Let's go to today. First 15 minutes. So somewhere in that time frame, and if I say that time frame, I'm going to say somewhere right here, if I want to get even more specific, I'm going to say it probably was that one red one right there. They... Uh, for all intents and purposes, they most likely sold the market. Uh, put on long puts, really, uh, I don't know exactly what they did, but I do know that long puts were added and some positions were taken off for a loss. And just doing my studying here if i just put my two cents here 15 is right there so somewhere in that first 15 minutes it probably had to close so i'm going to say probably happened there at the i bet you it probably happened in the first five to ten minutes and then look at all they missed Look at all they missed from that point. Literally, we had a, man, we had a ride. And obviously, the last couple hours, it, it, it really made its run up. Does this prove anything to me? Well, it proved I lost like uh, 0.48 on a 0.45 market. I did not beat the market today. But I wasn't off by a lot. I wasn't off by a lot. And some of that comes down to how was I able to wait it out?
is it possible, right? Short answer is, I usually like to wait to wait for the first hour to go by. So E minis clear out of the market. I, I don't want to call it a rule because you guys know what I think of rules, but I usually will wait for that first hour, at least that first half hour to go by before I start making, <laughs> I was going to kind of giggle here, before I start making what most would interpret as a knee jerk reaction. Um, I want to clear the emails out. I want to see the true trend of the market. I know the first 15 minutes to a half hour is nothing more than the clearing of those e-minis, in which case it's, it's pre-market trading that's just finishing up. And I want to trade on the day. I'm not too interested in pre-market trading. I want to trade on the day. I still have some long puts in place from earnings. After the first hour, support levels for some stocks were holding. And I'm saying this and right now at 10.15 Mountain Standard Time, which is 12.15 back east, I'm saying this, and I'm pretty sure the U.S. indexes right now are down 160, 19.25 on the S&P and 57.75 on the futures for the NASDAQ. We're looking like a bad day tomorrow because of White House comments. But we've been here before. My problems... Our stock ownership without protection and bull puts shorter term after a good earnings that have the shorts in the money or close to being in the money. So I've got bull puts on Apple. Uh, 22, excuse me, 202.50 and 270. I've got some on some stock ownership going to get called away from me at, uh, at 210. So here I've got some, some bull puts that I already have to think about rolling out in time and possibly down in strike price. <sighs> excuse me. Lillian just came out. Um, the question comes, do I need to roll some, some protection up? Ah, it's a selling man. It's a go away. Uh, Dizzy's not going to do it. You know, all these stocks that have had great earnings are all going to fall back down. I, I just don't see it. I still see a trade agreement coming along. This is posturing. And in all honesty, we have seen this time and time again. This is the Trump way. I kind of want to scratch my head and go, people, haven't you figured this out yet? Now, I did have someone that called and very politely asked me, well, what am I going to do? And there were three or four times today where I set a time for me to decide what I was going to do. And the short answer is I decided, you know what? I'm going to hold off. 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 And I choose to, I chose to, to hold off. I chose to, to let, um, to let time solve the problem. 
and some will say I got lucky today, but again, past history never guarantees future uh, results, but I did know that I've seen this in the past, and I could give it a chance and just let it go. And by giving it a chance and just letting it go, uh, I somewhat look like a genius today. No, I did not beat the market. And no, I'm not ready to make a big change. As I look at the indexes, right? Technically, we're still bullish. And we bounced off of the 50-day for the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I spent a little bit of time paying attention to the Williams percent R. Um, we're still bullish, but it looks like, for all intents and purposes, uh, big money institution money is already currently in. When you look at the S&P 500, um, for all intents and purposes, we could not get above the 200 day. That was our two down days. I did think we'd go back up and earnings might push us above, but technically we're also still bullish on the S&P 500. And what I do like about it is we're, we're staying in that overbought territory for the ones percent R, where big money is still heavily invested. And they did that. Um, these are not the charts I'm looking for. I don't know why I have that one in there. Let's give it a second. Let's see if I can insert the right chart. I didn't think that looked correct. All right. So let's look at it one more time. Um, everything I just said about the S&P was wrong because I had the wrong chart, but I do still have us bullish. We haven't even quite touched the 50 day. So there's still time for us to, to bounce, but I do like the bounce and we were holding a pivot point for all intents and purposes today. We held a pivot point at uh, the two Where would I say? Close at 29. So we held the 2914 pivot point today. Middle pivot point, usually the strongest pivot point, or short term level of support. And again, what I was trying to say is I do like that throughout the whole year we have had institutional money running into the stock market. Uh, again, for, for the most part, for the whole year. Shows me they are counting on a trade, uh, a China trade deal bounce. And then obviously the uh, the NASDAQ also still bullish, bounced off of its 18, 16, and 19 cent medium pivot point. We ended up bouncing higher even though we started out lower. Uh, I still do like, again, same Williams percent R. Money's been going in all year. Because of that, if you were to ask me where we're going to finish this week, I'm going to tell you higher. We have some pretty good earnings, at least a couple that I pay attention to, that uh, I think would move us higher. If we are still to be asked on the month in general, I would say we're going to be up 3% in May. That is 100% related to a China deal. I think the China deal could give us a 5% bump, but we obviously will have some sell-off going into the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Earnings, uh, Del Taco, Mosaic, Tyson Foods, AES, Allergen, Crocs, Emerson. Lyft is tomorrow, which may be interesting. Sprint, Win, Wednesday, BJ, Cormac, uh, VG is Vonage, Wendy's. Century Tail Fossil, uh, Kraft Heinz Corporation, which is kind of sucking it right now. But Disney will be my big one after the close on Wednesday. No reason Disney couldn't go recapture the 142 range and finish heading off to 150 in the next 30 to 60 days. Thursday, Cardinal Health, Duke Energy, GoPro, TiVo, uh, Zillow, Yelp, uh, 
my first solar. This is Vivint Solar, FridayJD.com. We do have a pretty slow economic reports week, and really, even internationally, we just have China's trade balance and China's inflation. I think we will be driven this week by news. Um, pretty interesting today. Um, everyone's still coming on Wednesday for the trade negotiations, so it looks good. And I do like the leverage that China that Trump has. Um, I would like to take credit for it, but I do see him saying, "Hey, threaten to raise the tariffs to to kind of bring them to the table to move a little quicker." Obviously, he will most likely say on Friday, all right, we're going to give them another 30 days. That way they can go back and save face and say, hey, no, you know, no tariffs. We talked him out of it. And off you run to uh, probably a China deal the end of May. That would be my expectation. The end uh, before our holiday, before the last week of May. When you ask me how I'm looking to trade, I'm still going long for a China deal. Uh, the next range I expect to be better than expected. With that said, when it comes to collar trading, remember collar trading is a stock ownership position. It is a short call and it's a long put. If you have been adding short calls, that has been killing your profit potential in the last 10 years. If you have been adding long puts or having long puts, for every earnings and on 100% of the time, you gave away your profit. So I am taking some risk, still following a 10 year bullish trend. With that said, I found some pretty good articles that I would suggest you read. Here's what Wall Street is saying about Trump's tariff threat and what it means for investors. Very interesting. Go through and read what Goldman thinks, what City thinks, what UBS, Raymond James, Oppenheimer, RBC, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, uh, JP Morgan, I think was really detailed on what they're looking at and why. Um, I don't know that last one, but but I think some of these are are pretty interesting. And I don't know, I, <clears throat> this is one of those that for me seems pretty simple. When everything goes on sale, don't run out of the market. Look for opportunities to get back in. Look to get into some stocks at a cheaper price. An interesting article, I think I put this in before, maybe last week with Kiev, but America's biggest deficits are solving a big problem for markets. I would take a peek and read through this. If you're interested in the macro events, go through and read through about deficits. And I do think if you read through some of this, it'll be pretty interesting to see a unique view on a macro deficit um, How am I trying to say this? On a macro point of view of how deficits can actually be helping the United States and helping the world in general. Pretty interesting to read. Uh, I'm a Ford believer. Today, Ford's rebound just getting started. Here's why it's the only auto Kramer endorses. Again, this has been for Ford for two years. And for two years, it really has gone the wrong direction, but it definitely has made a turnaround. It's definitely showing how important uh, it is for the U.S. markets, and it's killing it. There's no reason why Ford couldn't be at 13 by the end of the summer, and there's no reason why it couldn't be upwards to 17, possibly by the end of the year. So uh, I would take a look if you're interested in something. Take a look in our trade findings and look at uh, Ford. Still getting into some leap long calls at $10, maybe going to $11. You can get somewhere in that $1.40 to dollar range. Good opportunity for a little bit of patience. And then last but not least, 
fact book, The Winners and Losers in Trump's Trade War China. Pretty interesting to go through and read through it. Um, it, it kind of helps yourself build your portfolio and model your portfolio after where you might see some of our uh, some of the movements within the macro view uh, of the of the the China trade deal and what particular companies are are succeeding in that and which ones have not. So pretty interesting read. Uh, again, I do think it's something that'll help you get a broader understanding or term. I also had a talk with Keeve today about the tariffs. And if I can spend a couple minutes going over that, yes, tariffs will raise the prices of Chinese goods. And I think we have something like $650 billion of Chinese goods that we bring in to the US. Yes, it's going to raise the cost of those goods for Americans that buy Chinese goods. But as I used uh, an example, uh, for example, I'm going to use a car example, and I, I used Hyundai, and, and of course that was North Korea, but but plain and simple, if you have a $20,000 car and it's got a tariff of 25% on it, that $20,000 car will now cost you $24,000 as they raise the price to recoup the cost of that tariff. So if you wanted to buy a Chinese car, at $20,000, it's cheap. At $24,000, it's not as cheap as a Ford Focus. And so maybe you're now saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to make America great again. I'm going to buy a U.S. car because it's cheaper and the quality is very comparable. The tariffs are pricing or trying to price out of the U.S. consumer's um, pocketbook some Chinese goods, which means lower demand, which means lower purchasing, it will slow down their economy even more. As I worked my numbers, you know, they're a $2.3 trillion economy, and that would mean that we are about a third of their sales. We are a third of their GDP, in which case, if we can really slow that down, uh, it will basically, wreak havoc on their economy whereas you know our 250,000 that we export over to them hey we sell worldwide everyone buys our stuff um the u.s won't be nearly as affected because our gdp is actually 80 percent based on our consumers here buying so to lose you know two three percent to china not a big issue, not a big deal, doesn't have the same effect on us. And that is why we have some negotiating power that really the negotiation should be pretty easy. It's nothing more than saying, hey, we buy a ton of crap from you. Let's uh, let's narrow that trade deficit. Let's have you buy some more stuff from us. And more importantly, let's not have you rip off our intellectual property. All they're trying to do now is come up with tough enough i don't know what am i trying to say tough enough punishments that china can can regulate its own companies and monitor its own companies versus saying just take it you're good just take it so pretty interesting what trump's decided to do i like it i think it's a a smart thing to do and in all honesty, it's uh, it's going to work. It's going to work, and we, I, my plan is that we will have a trade deal here in the near future. So as tough as today was, as tough as tomorrow is going to be, I'd expect tomorrow to come back, and Disney will probably put us on a bullish trend for the end of the week. Not a whole lot of economic reports to push us one way or the other, so earnings will guide us. Obviously, end game. Just hit two billion. We'll beat the, you know what, three point one billion or two and a half billion, two point six something billion, right? Uh, it'll be the biggest, best movie of all time, and Disney takes, you know what, sixty percent of the cut. They're doing amazing. They're gonna, they're gonna have one heck of a quarter next quarter. 
So look for some maybe some raised guidance by Disney. And Disney might be a great protect to put strategy to see it bounce up to at least 42, if not 50 in the next 30 to 45 days. Guys, I apologize again. Uh, some family emergencies came up that uh, will make the next week, week and a half a little jumbled for me. I will do the best I can to do as many of these live as possible. Otherwise, I'll get these recorded and get them out to you ASAP. You guys have a wonderful week. Look to, to get this out to you here late in the evening, and you can listen to it, obviously, tomorrow being Tuesday the 7th. Disney's earnings on, on Wednesday after the market close. That could be a big run, and don't get spooked out of the market. Don't get that fat finger and start placing trades and, and getting you know losing coming and going. Nothing more frustrating, nothing more... I want to say humiliating, but that's not the word. It's just nothing more damaging to your ego and your self-confidence in trading to lose coming on the, the news and then going as it goes back up to the where it was before by knee-jerk reactions in that first hour. Uh, appreciate you guys. Look forward to talking to you live tomorrow night, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.